Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation of Future Radio. Hey, I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Monday, December 21st, 2020. And we are live. Hope everybody's doing well today. It is the winter solstice. Shortest day of the year. Longest night of the year. December 21st. And we know that uh, starting on December 25th, you have an increased amount of sunlight. And December 25th in ancient times was known as the birth date of the Son of God. Not the S-O-N, but the S-U-N. All right. So we'll talk some about the winter solstice. I guess maybe I should have prefaced it with my disclaimer. I may say some things that outside the circumference of your own awareness just because you disagree with them or don't like them does not mean they are not true or maybe if you haven't heard them before does not mean that they are not true just means you have to do some research to understand what i'm talking about okay so we'll, we'll, we'll talk some about the uh, uh winter solstice and then also I, I posted an article today um about a statue of general robert e lee that was uh removed in virginia and this got a huge uh, response and a lot of uh, comments, number of articles written about it. Uh, it got about 1,400 likes on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. So we're going to talk uh, some about that. Uh, Robert E. Lee statue removed from U.S. Capitol. Robert E. Lee statue removed from U.S. Capitol. Uh, and you're going to have... Uh, a governor, it was it was a statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. It's been removed from the United States Capitol and Virginia Governor um, Ralph Northam announced it on Monday, uh, Monday, December 21st. And the statue is going to be replaced by a statue of Barbara Johns, who was a um, African-American woman who in 1951, when she was 16 years old, led a student strike for equal education at um, a high school there in Virginia. OK, so we'll talk some about that um, on Friday, December 18th. I was on uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered. I'm usually on each Friday as a panelist. And one of the topics we discussed was um, Dionne Warwick and Dionne Warwick is on Twitter. She's been tweeting. She's been talking to other celebrities and um, talking about current events, things like this. And she was a guest on Roland Martin Unfiltered. So the panelists, myself included, got a chance to talk to her, ask her questions. So we're going to share the exchange that uh, happened between myself and uh, the one and only Miss Dionne Warwick, who whose birthday was December 12th. OK, so she turned 80 years old. Uh, so we talked about that here on this show, uh, gave her a birthday shout out. Now, today is also the birth date of one uh, Samuel <laughs> Foulmouth Jackson. OK, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, whose movies are the largest grossing movies in Hollywood. Um, we, we posted about this today and uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, he, you know, we, he has such memorable roles, but uh, most recently uh, he's portraying Nick Fury in the Avengers movies, the, the Marvel universe movies. Um, so uh, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, uh, he turned uh, 72 today. Born December 21st, 1948. Okay. He turned 72. And we know that uh, the one and only Miss Cicely Tyson had a birth date uh, as well a couple of days ago. And we posted about that uh, also. All right. So we'll, we'll talk about that. And then the uh, House of Representatives um, passed a coronavirus bill, a $900 billion um, coronavirus bill. And it's uh, it uh, is now it has to pass the U.S. Senate. OK, so this is just a down payment, as many Democrats are referring uh, to it as uh, if you remember back in May, mid May 2020, Democrats in the House of Representatives 
passed a $3.4 trillion Heroes Act, a $3.4 trillion Heroes Act, okay? And that was supposed to be the next coronavirus bill, but it, it died in the Senate, as many bills that pass in the House do. They're, they're blocked by Moscow, Mitch McConnell, and they die in the Senate. So we'll talk a little bit about this. House passes COVID relief bill to provide nearly $900 billion in aid to struggling Americans. The stimulus check is only six hundred dollars, but there's some there, there's some other good things in uh, in the bill. But this is just a down payment. Uh, Americans need a lot more than this. The states, many states are going to need federal assistance. That many states are going to need a bailout um, uh, also because of the amount of money that they've had to pay out in uh, unemployment insurance. And because of many states' constitutions, they can't run a deficit like the federal government can. OK. So uh, we'll talk some about that. Um, some of the chaos, some of the craziness with the Trump administration, we'll probably get to uh, on uh, Tuesday night. It's been a very busy day. And uh, I don't want to bombard you with a not a nonsense coming from the Trump administration. We, we, we try to deal with this some, but. Uh, it's it, all I can say is January 20th, 2020 cannot come soon enough because, uh, kook, uh, attorney Sidney Powell and, and, uh, others were back at the white house today. And we know on Friday there was a big meeting and, uh, at the white house and, um, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, who, um, pleaded guilty in federal court and got a presidential pardon from unindicted co-conspirator Donald Trump, unindicted co-conspirator uh, um, uh, number one, Donald Trump, um, floated the idea of declaring martial law and seizing the voting machines in battleground states that Trump lost. Not battleground states Trump won, not any states that Trump won, just the states that Trump lost and to force uh, an election again in those states. Just nonsense. Now, I want people to keep in mind that this is the same guy that President Barack Obama told Donald Trump don't hire. Because uh, President Barack Obama told uh, Donald Trump, I had to fire Lieutenant General Michael Flynn and don't hire him. And Trump hired him anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is the type of nonsense that's going on right now. Uh, we saw that, you know, I posted an article uh, earlier today. We saw that um, uh, attorney, outgoing Attorney General William Barr said that there was no, uh, uh, he talked about that there's no evidence of widespread voter fraud, no reason to, um, well, what, how, do you, how do you phrase it? Let me pull this up here. Had to do with uh, special counsel. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, he's showing some backbone as he's leaving uh, the White House. Okay. There, there was a story from face to face Africa.com. We did not get a chance to talk about it on our Sunday night show. And um, I said we would talk about it here. That deals with actress Cynthia Erivo. OK, uh, she's going to star in and produce a film about an enslaved Yoruba girl, Yoruba in Nigeria, uh, who became a gift to the Queen of England, who became a gift to the Queen of England. OK, we're going to talk um, uh, some about that story. We have some other uh, topics that we're going to get to uh, the rest of the week, and I'm going to do some special broadcasts on uh, some of these topics also that we may run out of time for uh, here on the show. All right, so on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his actions or a woman's actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. 
Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events and history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter, also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com uh if you'd like to stop for information you can donate to the african history network dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app then also through paypal paypal.me forward slash the ahn show paypal.me forward slash the ahn show um visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com you can also uh, sign up for our email newsletter there text the word kemet k-e-m-e-t the 22828 or um at our website africanhistorynetwork.com okay i know we're coming up here on the break just a minute here uh calling numbers 313-778-7600 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment um Let's look at the, okay, hold on just a second here. Um, we've got the, I uh, put up the article here dealing with Attorney General William Barr. When we come back from the break, we'll talk about the, uh, we'll talk about the winter solstice uh, when we come back here from the break. But, and then also this story is um, just coming in now. Feds have discussed obtaining Rudy Giuliani's electronic communications. Um, NBC News is reporting this. Feds have discussed making a legal request for former Mayor Rudy Giuliani's electronic communications, say two sources. The federal investigation of the president's personal lawyer is ongoing, said two sources familiar with the matter, with one saying it is, quote unquote, very active. It is very active. Um, yeah, you know, we, uh, yeah, he's he, now Rudy would probably get a pardon um, before Trump leaves the White House, but pardon doesn't uh, protect him from state charges. A pardon does not protect him from state charges, so he needs to uh, he needs to watch out. Okay, there was a uh, I wanted to pull up the article here from CNN um, we'll go to that in just a second also uh, in birthday news uh, today is the birth date of one Miss Betty Wright Betty Wright born December 21st 1953 she was a soul and R&B singer songwriter and background vocalist beginning her professional career in the late 1960s as a teenager betty wright rose to fame in the 1970s with hits such as clean up woman and tonight is the night betty wright was also prominent in her use of a uh, whistle register now betty wright passed away early this year from cancer on may 10th 2020 at her home in miami she uh, would have been 67 years old today so Happy birthday to Betty Wright. And then also today is the birth date of uh, the woman who was at one point the fastest woman in the world. Miss Flojo Florence Griffith Joyner was born December 21st, 1959. And I mean, she was a phenomenon. She had style. She had fashion. I remember her on the TV show 227. You know, she was beautiful as well. Um, she is the, uh, she was the fast, uh, she is the fastest woman of all time. The world's record, she said in 1998 for both the 100 meters and 200 meters still stand, uh, during the late 1980s, she became a popular figure in international track and field because of her record setting and flashy personal style in February, 1989, she abruptly retired after her retirement from athletics, Florence Griffith joined, remained a popular cultural a cultural cultural figure through endorsement deals, acting and designing uh, U.S. track and field inducted her into the Hall of Fame in 1995. Sadly, she passed away in 1998 at the age of 38. 
she had an epileptic seizure while she was asleep and died in her sleep. OK, so Florence Griffith Joyner would have been 61 years old today. This comes courtesy of uh, Soul TV. Uh, we're going to break. Uh, you listen to the African History Network show right here on 910 a.m. The Superstation Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Stand by, everybody. Stand by. Um, OK, stand by. We'll be back in just a minute here. Uh, we listen to the African History Network show. Everybody, share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. I have to get ready for this next segment. Just a second here. Stand by, everybody. Uh, I'm trying to find the book. Uh, we'll be back from break in just a minute. God damn. I just hit this shit. All right. How's everybody doing? All right, stand by everybody. And we have a new advertiser. It is blackbusinesstea.com. Blackbusinesstea, T-E-E.com. Keep your business in the black and out of the red. Mind your black business. Know your numbers and plan strategically. Dr. Sherry Henderson can help you with this. Black business boss, lead your industry. Uh, visit the website, blackbusinesstea.com t.com um support black business encourage patronize and uplift one another they uh, they have t-shirts they have all type of apparel uh to support african-american-owned businesses currently sold in detroit atlanta chicago and uh los angeles proceeds return to the black community visit bi visit black business t.com for more information Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the feature radio. I'm your host, Bella Michael M. Hotep. It is Monday, December 21st, 2020. And uh, it is the winter solstice as well. 313-778-7600 um, is the call in number if you have a question or comment. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Um, Okay, so uh, let's go to this information here, dealing with the winter solstice. Then we'll go to uh, the Dionne Warwick story, and we'll get to some of these other topics here. So you may have seen articles today dealing with the winter solstice. Now, what I say may go outside this accomplice of some people's awareness. Just because you disagree with it or don't like it or never heard it before does not mean it's not true. It just means you have to do some research to really understand what I'm talking about. So CNN.com has a good article, and I, I read articles each year dealing with the winter solstice. Um, I, I've done a three-hour presentation called Ancient Kemet, the Winter Solstice, and the History of Christmas. Ancient Kemet, the Winter Solstice, and the History of Christmas is available at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And it's a three-hour lecture, so we get deep into um uh, this history and the origins of christmas and astronomy the winter solstice things like that all all of this is connected okay all of this is connected and that presentation is on uh dvd and digital download okay that's available at africanhistorynetwork.com so if we look at this article here from um cnn.com uh, today business insider had one also uh, a number of different outlets had them. Uh, winter solstice 2020, the shortest day is long on ancient pagan traditions. The shortest day is long on ancient 
pagan traditions. Okay, now don't let the word pagan scare you. All right, uh, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't have to doesn't mean necessarily something negative. Now, for six months, the days have grown shorter and the nights have grown longer in the northern hemisphere. But that's about to reverse itself. Winter solstice 2020, the shortest day, uh, the shortest day of the year and the official start of winter is on Monday, December 21st. So all this deals with astronomy. OK, uh, how it all works has fascinated people for thousands of years. First, uh, so first they look at the science of this. Now, the science and timing behind uh, winter solstice. Uh, and, and solstice basically means sun stands still, basically means sun stands still uh, on the winter solstice. The sun enters into its lowest point of the year and then uh, it appears to not move for three days. And then on December 25th, it moves one degree northward uh, and that marks an increase each day, each subsequent day in uh, the amount of sunlight. And December 25th in ancient times was known as the birth date of the son of God, not the S-O-N, but the S-U-N. Now, the winter solstice marks the shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere when the sun appears at its most southerly position, at its lowest point, its most southerly position directly overhead at the fairway Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Capricorn. The situation is in reverse in the southern hemisphere. There, uh, there, the December solstice marks the longest day of the year and the beginning of summer in places such as Argentina, Australia, and in South Africa. Okay, so uh, when does this exactly occur? The solstice usually, but not always, takes place on December 21st. So it can, it can take place on December 20th, December 21st, or early in the morning on December 22nd. The time that the solstice occurs and the day itself shifts because the solar year, the time it takes the sun to reappear in the same spot as seen from Earth, does not exactly match up to our calendar year. OK, now, if you so our calendar year is 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 based upon how long when we look at the Gregorian calendar is based upon how long it takes the Earth to rotate around the sun one time. OK, it takes the it takes the Earth. Um, it, it, it takes the Earth 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes and approximately 46 seconds. OK, so that's that's what the Gregorian calendar is based upon, the 365 one quarter days each year. And then every fourth year you have you add one full day, a leap year to, to balance things out. So that's based upon how long it takes the Earth to rotate around the sun. OK, so it takes 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes and about 46 seconds. Some sources will say forty five point fifty one seconds. And the Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582 by Pope Gregory the 13th. Okay. Not to make this a deep history uh lesson. I don't want to get too deep into this for radio, but the reason why they're introducing the Gregorian calendar is because they're trying to recalculate when to celebrate Easter. Because as we celebrate Easter today, Easter is celebrated on the first Sunday as we celebrate Easter today, Easter is celebrated on the first Sunday following the first full moon following the vernal equinox. Okay. What's Take place further and further away from what we call the vernal equinox. All right. And they're trying to recalculate when to celebrate Easter. So they are they a new calendar is introduced so that the celebration of Easter is closer to what's known as the vernal equinox, which marks the first day of spring. That determination to come up with a new calendar and to change um when 
Easter celebrated. That was one of the results of what's known as the Third Council of Trent of 1563 A.D. The Third Council of Trent, T-R-E-N-T -E of 1563 A.D. And this is one of those 20. This is one of those 21 or so ecumenical councils that take place from 325 A.D. up until around 1870 that shape the way people practice Christianity and celebrate Christianity and what they believe. OK, and this go that goes back with the first ecumenical council in 325 A.D., the first council of Nicaea. All right. I'm not trying to get too deep into this right now. I just 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 skimming the surface. Um, but research the first council of Trent, T-R, the third, I'm sorry, the third council of Trent, T-R-E-N-T of 1563 A.D. All right. So. Um when we look at the uh, if we go back look at the winter solstice here so the solstice usually but not always takes place on december 21st the time that the solstice occurs and the day itself shifts because the solar year uh the time it takes for the sun to reappear in the same spot as seen from earth does not exactly match up to our calendar year if you want to uh be super precise in your observations the exact time of the 2020 winter solstice will be 1002 um uh, 1002 universal time on monday and uh, it goes through and gives some uh uh, different times in different countries that it takes place. Okay. Uh, so let me scroll down here. Um, so what causes the winter solstice to happen? So because the earth is tilted on this rotational axis, we experience seasons here on earth. Okay. Because the earth is tilted on its rotational axis, we experience different seasons, spring, fall, winter, it's hotter in spring, okay? I mean, sorry, it's hotter in summer, colder in winter, okay? It deals with the position of the sun and uh, it deals with the position of the earth in uh, relationship to the sun. Now, as the earth moves around the sun, each hemisphere experiences winter when it's tilted away from the sun, okay? So it's tilted away from the sun. The northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, so it experience winter because it's cold colder it's closer to the sun it's summer it's pretty simple okay when it's tilted away from the sun in summer when it's tilted toward the sun all right now um what other seasonal transitions do we mark because you know sometimes people say oh well that's that uh astrological hocus pocus stuff that's astronomy and you know that's that's the devil and things like that right so when we look at the equinoxes okay both spring and fall equinoxes occur when the sun's rays are directly over the equator on those two days everyone has an equal length of day and night the summer solstice okay which is june 20th june 21st Okay, it was March the first day of summer. The summer solstice is when the sun rays are farthest north over the Tropic of Cancer, giving us our longest day of the year and the official start of summer in the northern hemisphere. Now, winter solstice traditions and celebrations, winter solstice traditions and celebrations. So this ties into history. Now, I'm not going to belabor this point now uh because i've done a three-hour lecture on it and this is only a one-hour show so <laughs> and you can't see what i'm talking about here so i'm not gonna get deep into too deep into this but just to skim the surface so you know to do more research um it's no surprise many cultures and religions celebrate a religion whether it be christmas hanukkah kwanzaa or what are referred to as pagan festivals now the, this the term pagan doesn't necessarily mean something negative it just means something basically indigenous to a group of people or it could, it could refer to a rural district district it could re refer to something that we would consider to be country like your um 
you have like country cousins or relatives down in Alabama or in the South and you say the way they do things is backwards or something like that. Right. Uh, like they may eat chitlins or something, you know, <laughs> it's like, wait, it's 2020. You still eating chitlins. <laughs> Uh, whether it's Chris with the return survival depended on a precise knowledge of seasonal cycles mark the these celebrations symbolize the opportunity for renewal a shedding of bad habits and negative feelings and and embracing of hope amid darkness as the days once again begin to grow longer. Many of the ancient symbols and ceremonies of the winter solstice live on today or have been incorporated into newer traditions. So they list a few of them. Saturnalia, the Roman festival of Saturnalia. In ancient Rome, Saturnalia began on December 17th and lasted for seven days. This was the ancient Roman festival. It honored Saturn, the Roman deity or Roman god of agriculture. The people enjoyed carnival-like festivities resembling modern-day Mardi Gras celebrations and even delayed their war making. Saturnalia became but Saturnalia continued into the third and fourth centuries AD as the Roman Empire came under Christian influence and eventual Christian rule some of the festivals customs were melded into celebrations surrounding Christmas and the new year hmm you mean there was a fusion of old traditions and new traditions? Stonehenge, the United Kingdom's most famous site for solstice celebrations is Stonehenge. On the winter solstice, visitors traditionally have, have had opportunity to enter the towering, mysterious stone circle for a sunrise ceremony run by local quote-unquote pagan and druid groups the druids okay and the druids are dealing with the watered down version of teachings coming out of ancient egypt ancient kemet because of the because of the coronavirus pandemic in-person celebrations have been canceled this year at stonehenge but the english heritage society has set it up so you can live stream the sunrise, the sunrise from Stonehenge. Okay. Then, um, let's see here. They talk about the, uh, the Christmas star. Okay. The Christmas star. And they talk, uh, talk about Saturn and, uh, Jupiter. Now on the night of December 21st, Jupiter and Saturn were, uh, will appear so closely aligned in our sky that they will look like a double planet. This close approach is called a conjunction. Now you may have seen that on social media. It's probably a trending topic on social media on Twitter today, conjunction, okay? Now, some people may have seen conjunction and that thought they were talking about schoolhouse rock, lolly lolly, get your adverbs here. You know, conjunction function and all that, no, not, not that type of conjunction. You know, schoolhouse rock was cool, but this is a different type of conjunction. As it's happening, just in time for Christmas, the, the, uh, there's some people who don't know what Schoolhouse Rock was, ABC, <laughs> Saturday morning, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm a bill on Capitol Hill, <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock, Google Schoolhouse Rock, okay? <laughs> as, as it's happening just in time for Christmas, many are giving it the nickname of the Christmas star. Quote, you'd have to go all the way back to just before dawn on March 4th in the year 1226 AD, 1226 AD, to see a closer alignment 
between these objects visible in the night sky, end quote, said, uh, wrote astronomer Patrick Hartigan, a professor of physics and astronomy at Rice University in Houston, Texas. The solstice and the Christmas star will give a coronavirus wary world two potent symbols, symbols of hope and reminders of a universe that marches to its own beat. No virus can stop. No virus can stop. Okay. Not even the Trump virus. <laughs> so check out this article here from, you can read it in its entirety. You can read the rest of it from CNN.com. Uh, winter solstice 2020. The shortest day is long on ancient pagan traditions. All right. Don't let that word pagan. Uh, don't don't let that word pagan scare you. All right. <laughs> Three, one, three, seven, seven, eight, seventy six hundred is the calling number. If you have a question or comment, three, one, three, seven, seven, eight, seventy six hundred is the calling number. If you uh, have a question or comment. OK, so I don't want to go too deep into this. Um especially when it's like information I can't show you. Uh, but in, in the, um, as before, and it is from the, um, just, just to show you the comparison here and show you how all this is connected. It's from the, it's a book called the life of Christ rediscovering how his life, death and resurrection changed the world. Now this is from the, American Bible Society put out by uh, Time Life Books. I think it was Time Life, Time Home Entertainment Books. Right? Was it, you know, I, I, I was up late one night, like I am often, um, and I was, you, you see the um, commercials, the infomercials they had. all this stuff right uh african-american music and i sat back and i'm looking at you know all these artists and things like this and i'm like you know we don't own any of the music or a lot of it we don't own it, a lot of these artists are dead and they're still selling their music making money off of them and they're dead and we don't own a lot of this stuff okay <laughs> that doesn't make any sense and then we'll in one way, it does understand the music industry and white supremacy and racism, but it, it, it still doesn't make any sense, you know. So, all right, but very quickly here on page 55. Now, this is the 2011 edition of uh, dealing with the uh, dealing with the life of Christ from the American Bible Society. And on page 55, it talks about how. Uh, on page 55, we'll go to the phone lines in just a minute here. Uh, on page 55, it, it, ta it talks about how um, we really don't know the birth date of, it, it, it says, uh, why December 25th? Why December 25th? We don't know the actual date of Jesus' birth, but it most likely wasn't on December 25th. Now, most people that you know, study Christianity, know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know because nowhere in the biblical, now this may go outside the circumference of some people's awareness, but nowhere in the biblical text does it state that Jesus the Christ was born on December 25th, okay? Most people understand that, right? But it says in Christianity's early days, people debated when to celebrate Jesus' uh, uh, birthday, okay? Some Christians were against celebrating the birthday at all because they didn't want jesus compared to pharaoh or herod okay and i didn't say which pharaoh which is a whole nother uh discussion uh or nasubiti because nasubiti would be the term that we would have used in ancient egypt um they didn't want this to be compared to pharaoh or herod whose birthdays were but in the fourth century a.d Pope Julius the first made it official. Christ's birth would be celebrated on December 25th. Christ's birth would be celebrated on December 25th. 
Now, December 25th was already considered the birthday of the S-U-N, the son, okay, or the son of God, not the S-O-N, but the S-U-N. Using the technology available at the time, ancient astronomers observed that on December 25th, the days of the year started getting longer again. They recognized uh, December 25th, they, 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 they recognized the date as the winter solstice, the winter solstice, when the sun is born again each year, when the sun is born again each year. So once again, like I said, all this is connected. OK, this is why you have to understand a chronology of history. All of this is connected. And when we look at the Helios Biblos, the sun book or the Holy Bible, Holy Bible coming from the Greek Helios Biblos. You're dealing with the not to get too deep into this. Seriously, just not to get too deep in this, but you're dealing with stories that deal with the travel of the S.U.N. The sun throughout the 12 constellations. If you read Christianity Before Christ by Dr. John G. Jackson, he breaks this down in this book. Okay, so um, when you actually understand this, you uh, many of these stories are re are a reinterpretation or retelling of much older stories coming out of ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, Sumer, many ancient civilizations. So you can use the the Helios Biblos, and, and if you um, it, it make a long story short, if you understand history and the origins of a lot of these stories, they take you right back to ancient Africa. If you actually understand where this comes from, this takes you right back to ancient Africa, right back to ancient Kemet, right back to the Nile Valley region of Africa. If you read Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization by Tony Browder, this helps to connect the dots. Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization by Tony Browder. You read Christianity Before Christ um, by Dr. John G. Jackson. This book right here. Now, this is an old copy. This is from like 94 or something like that when I got this one. Uh, John G. Jackson. This is, yeah, I got this December 30th, 94. New Year's Eve, 1994. Christianity Before Christ by Dr. John G. Jackson. You can read uh, Robin Walker is a brilliant historian. Blacks and Religion, Volume 1. What did Africa contribute to the origin of religion? The Equinox and the real story behind Easter. Um, Robin Walker, he's in Hidden Colors 4. Robin Walker is, lives in London or the UK. He's a brilliant historian. Um, and then, yeah, so you check those out. And then uh, um, Now Valley Contributions to Civilization by Tony Browder. You can look at, and even this book here, this helps connect the dots. This is So for my lecture that I, I do, uh, Ancient Kemet, The Winter Sources and the History of Christmas, this is uh, one of my sources, Christmas Miscellany by Jonathan Green. Everything you always wanted to know about Christmas, Christmas Miscellany. All, all of this is connected. OK. And then when we deal with center class. Who is um, uh, center class is Dutch for St. Nicholas. And. He was this religious figure that wore red and white and had a long white beard. OK, and is the inspiration of the um, that had the children the, is the inspiration of the uh, secular figure that becomes created here in this land that we call Santa Claus coming from center class, which was Dutch, which means St. Nicholas. And St. Nicholas was a real, uh, real saint, a uh, third, fourth, about third, fourth century bishop who becomes a saint. And when you study St. Nicholas, he was an African man who's a man of African descent. So all this history is connected. And then when, when we deal with 
center class, who we talked about when we dealt with Joata Piet, Black Pete. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Black Pete, Joata Piet, and in the Netherlands and in Holland, this whole festival that they have where these Europeans put on blackface and Afro wigs and oftentimes gold hoop earrings and imitate the and imitate uh they portray this fictitious character called Black Pete, Joata Piet, who was a Moor. Then this gets into the history of the Moors uh, invading Europe and conquering parts of Europe and being defeated and many of the Moors being enslaved. All this history is connected. That's why you have to understand a chronology of the history. OK, uh, so. Uh, so if we go back quickly here, page 55, uh, 2011 edition of uh, the life of Christ from the American Bible Society. The, the December 25th was already considered the birthday of the sun. Using the technology available at the time, ancient astronomers observed that on December 25th, the days started getting longer again. They recognized the date as the winter solstice when the sun is born again each year. The Romans celebrated the birthday of the deity or God, Sol Invictus, S-O-L, Sol, which means sun, okay, as in solstice, sun stands still. That's what's, that's literally what solstice means, is, is Latin. Um, so Sol Invictus means unconquered sun, and that was celebrated on December 25th. Th this day was also recognized as the day, uh, as the birthday of Mithra, Mithra, M-I-T, H.R.A. was a sun deity of the ancient Persians and also also as the birthday of Attis, A-T-T-I-S, -T an agricultural deity worshipped in Asia Minor. By choosing December 25th, the church avoided upsetting the masses. No one wanted their festivals canceled. So the Christian church simply combined this new Christian holiday with, quote unquote, pagan traditions well that's what the article from cnn talks about and then if you go to history.com the official website of the history channel look up christmas they have excerpts of a whole documentary they have on this and it deals with the origins of christmas it talks about the first council of nicaea all this stuff and it talks about these pre-christian traditions many of them that get infused into the celebration of christmas so all of this is connected. All right. Very quickly. And if you'd like this type of information, also, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show, through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show, through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me, forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me, forward slash the AHN show, and on our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. So being there, especially being here, being that we're here six days a week as opposed to one day a week, that really helps us to stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay the bills, do the research, etc. Um, and don't and don't forget, I have a, a three hour presentation, three hour lecture. I did it's a visual lecture. So I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, everything that where I go deep into this information. There were hundreds of years of history. It's uh, called Ancient Kemet, the Winter Solstice and the History of Christmas. Ancient Kemet, the Winter Solstice. And the history of Christmas is in DVD format and on digital download um, right now at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. I think it's fifteen dollars on DVD uh, right now at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, let's go uh, quick to the phone line. Sorry for that long explanation. Let's go to John Line One. John, we got about a minute. Uh, thanks for calling. Tell us where you're calling from, John. Do we have John there? If we don't have John, let's go to Line Two. Hello. Yeah, who we have here? Rod. Hey, Rod. Okay, Rod on line two. Hey, Rod, which city are you calling from, Rod? Benton Harbor, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Okay, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Okay, go ahead with your question yeah. or comment. Hey, hey, first, just real quick, real quick, but I appreciate appreciate your presentation tonight, being a man of God. I, uh, you know, we we know that you know you've been a brother, deep brother history. We know that. Um, that um, uh, history says that um, they brought they brought the baby Yeshua to they and took him to Egypt to hide him, and we know that we know that um, you can't hide nobody, you know, in a place that you that you stick out at. 
So we know that that in, in Detroit they took him an easy right. to he, a black folk. He, right? he would have blend. He would have blended so, in. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. That's, that's, that's another. That's a part of, of another lesson, and I'm sure in a long list of of, uh, of 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 lessons that you teach. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to get off get off cuff and to get off off subject tonight. But uh, you know, it's really really a shame and revolts against democracy and the history of this country. Um, you know, and it may be easy. I'm not I've heard you mention two times and many of us and you know the roots. Right. They, they didn't like it when Malcolm when Malcolm said it, but it was right on point. Right. It's, it's karma. He's trying to trying to actually use this military the now we know that it's good news. The military said they ain't gonna have no part of this foolishness. Right. So, but right. The military, the, the U.S. Army put out a statement because you know there, there's a tradition where the army does not carry out unlawful acts, and the army does not the, the military right. does not get involved in enforcing uh, election results or enforcing a new election or something. The military doesn't get involved in stuff like that. That's right. Now, now there was a gentleman on CNN about a couple of hours ago said that he may even try to weasel, weasel around that and, and 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 try to sneak in, sneak in some of that anyway. But yeah, I think I think that we can, you know, uh, be confident that that kind of coup is not going, is not going. Uh, right, right. So, no, no. You you uh, you have even people like Governor Chris Christie and uh, Pat Cipollone, White House Counsel, who are pushing back on what Trump is talking about. Hey, look, we're out, we're out of time here, man. You call back, call back in tomorrow night. We're on Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to 12 midnight. This is standard time. Um, so, okay, thanks. For, uh, no problem. All right, peace. So for those uh, watching us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, keep watching. We're going to keep broadcasting um, a little while longer. I'm going to share uh an excerpt from uh our conversation with Dion Warwick and we'll share this on uh 9 10 a.m tomorrow night we're, we're, we're out of time here um so remember right knowledge corrects wrong behavior it's not over till we win Wakanda forever thanks for tuning in and uh we'll talk to you tomorrow night stay tuned for uh Greg Davis Pastor Greg Davis we'll talk to you tomorrow night peace all right stand by everybody All right, let me disconnect that call. We're going to be here a little while longer because I am tired. Whew, it's been a long day. Um, just a second here. Let me disconnect this call. Okay. All right, stand by. All right. Okay, how's everybody doing? Uh, African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise with the African History Network. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. And then uh, we have two new advertisers, Black Business T, Black Business T. Visit their website, blackbusinesstea.com. Um, so their messages are clear and meaningful. Keep your business in the black and out of the red. Mind your black business, know your business, and plan strategically. Uh, support uh, black uh, business, encourage, patronize, and uplift one another. Uh, black business tea. So they have um, uh, t shirts that support African American owned businesses. They're currently sold in Detroit, Atlanta, Chicago, and uh, Los Angeles, and proceeds are returned to the African American community. Uh, visit their website, Black Business. T T E E Black Business T.com for more information. You, you, you'll hear more from them um, as well. Okay. All right. Now, let me uh, try to zip through some of the some of the tomorrow night because I wanted the winter solstice. We had to deal with that. And um, I don't want to be here too much longer. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go to this interview with uh, Dion Warwick here. Uh, let me pull this up. This is from Roland Martin Unfiltered. So uh, Dion Warwick has been in the news because of Twitter. She's on Twitter, 
and she's 80 years old. She turned 80 December 12th. And she's been tweeting different, you know, celebrities, younger artists, things like that, and having some interesting conversations. Uh, she was she was on uh, Jonathan Capehart's show on, um, I think it was Jonathan Cape was it Jonathan Capehart? I think it was Jonathan Capehart, or, or was it Tiffany Cross? One of uh, MSNBC, and but um, she was on Roller Martin Unfiltered first. Not the K-Part who had her on this past weekend. And when I got a chance to ask a question, um, kind of dealt with some history. Okay, we're going to pull this up here. Just bear with me. This is freezing up. Now, uh, U.S. House of Representatives has uh, passes a huge coronavirus relief bill. Lawmakers approved a nine hundred billion dollar bill, um, nine hundred billion dollar uh, pandemic aid that provides six hundred uh, dollar payments for most Americans. Uh, Congress on Monday night approved the Congress on Monday night approved. Uh, a nine hundred billion dollars uh, stimulus. Well, some people call it a rescue package, as opposed to necessarily a stimulus package. Some people call it a, a, a rescue package or relief package, as opposed to uh, a stimulus package. And uh, th this bill will send billions of dollars to American households and businesses grappling with the economic and health toll of the pandemic. Uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. Uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said hundreds of dollars in direct payments could begin reaching individual Americans as early as next week. Now, this is just a down payment. This is a drop in the bucket for, for what's needed. And Republicans were obstructionists once again on this bill. This is why a lot of them in the Senate, a lot of Republicans in the Senate need to be voted out of office um, in 2022 uh, uh, midterm elections. Now, the long salt relief package was part of a two point three trillion dollar catch all package that included one point four trillion to fund the uh, government through the end of the fiscal year on September 30th. Uh, it included the extension of routine uh, tax provisions, a tax deduction for uh, corporate meals, the establishment of two Smithsonian museums, a ban on surprise medical bill restoration of Pell Grants for incarcerated students, a restoration of Pell Grants for incarcerated students, among hundreds of other me measures. This bill, <laughs> this bill, this bill is like 5,500 pages. OK, this bill is about 5,500 pages. OK, so this is a heavy bill and this is just a drop in the bucket of what is actually needed. All right. Now. Um, let me go to, I want to go to this clip here. This is from, uh, Roland Martin unfiltered from December, Friday, December 18th, 2020. And we were talking to, uh, Dion Warwick. Let's go to this clip. You like one of the millennials who work for me. <laughs> you know, it's like everything else. You get to know about everything. And let, me, let me back it up here a minute. All right, stand by just a second here. All right, let's start back up. For some reason, it froze up. Up like this, or he may have done this on purpose. I I'm not. Hold on. What what got me? People initially said, "Oh, this really can't be her." Uh, did you have any friends of yours who said, "Dion, is this really you?" And you had to say, "Yeah, that's me." <laughs> Yeah, I did. In fact, I had to put up a, a a video letting people know, yes, it is me, and 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 why can't I be doing this? I mean, what's to prevent me from having some fun too? What what is it uh, that you like about now being on Twitter and just saying what you want to say and just throwing stuff out there? What is it? What is it that you like about it? You know, I'm, I'm getting to know uh, some people 
um, making new friends, um, finding uh, the youngsters who are aware of me, which is very nice to know, and uh, making new friends. You um, and you also uh, don't have a problem letting some folks like Wendy Williams know uh, to mind your business and keep your name out their mouth. You got that right. <laughs> I, I laughed the other day when somebody asked, when somebody asked, uh, how did, uh, you know, who told you about this? You like one of the millennials who worked for me. <laughs> you know, it's like everything else. You get to know about everything and everybody. You know, and I think that uh, my presence has uh, kind of um, put a little grown-up business into tweeting. You know, it has be, it has taken on another connotation, I believe. Do you wish you had gotten on Twitter earlier? No, uh, uh. I think this is. In fact, I think COVID has has had a lot to do with it too. It's taken up time and it's given me something to do, and I'm having a good time doing it. I got a panel here. I know they have. I got each one of them going to ask a question. I know they would love to ask you a question. I'm going to start with uh, Candace. Candace, what's your question for Dionne Warren? Uh, what's What's been your most interesting response that you've gotten from someone out there, especially in the celebrity world? I've actually, you know, I had a wonderful telephone conversation with Chance. We had a beautiful conversation. He's a lovely young man, and I'm I'm so pleased to have gotten to know him. Uh, he's um, very conscientious. I am thrilled with the work he does. I mean, he, he's, you know, I, I said, in fact, on several occasions, that Chicago should be giving him all the support and, and admiration that they could possibly muster for what this kid is doing and with home. Hello? Wow. You know, I, I'm just so thrilled to to gotten to know him. I really am. That's one of my new friends. Can you tell uh, us anything that he Michael said? Michael Imhotep, what's the question? For, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm here. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, Ms. Warwick, this is Michael Imhotep of the African History Network. How are you doing, sister? I'm fine, honey. How are you? I'm all right. It's good to be on with you. And uh, first of all, happy belated birthday. Your birthday is December 12th, so happy belated birthday. Um, That's right. Thank I, I, you. No problem. Hey, I, I saw an interview that um, D.L. Hughley did with you, and he asked a question about uh, the music that you did. Uh, like, um, the, do you know the way to San Jose? The, and the, the music that you did was different than a lot of music that African American artists, R and B artists, things like that were doing at the time. How did you navigate throughout those times in that genre, doing music that was different than what a lot of people were used to hearing coming from African Americans, especially African American female artists? Well, the songs that were being written specifically for me by two mm -hmm. of whom I feel the most prolific songwriters of our time, back like in David. Yes. Uh, we were. We literally caught the new niche out in the music industry. Uh, mm -hmm. We were doing something that no one else was doing. So it, it was completely different. And I think that, that has a, a lot to say about the gravitation that people had on every side. You know, everybody did. Our music was for everybody. It's itself, and that's why it worked. Always oh, them. Okay, there it is. <laughs> I say, I'm Ben Carter. Your question. All right, so uh, check out check out that show in its entirety um, from December 18th, 2020. Uh, it's on. Um, it's at Roland Martin on Roland S. Martin on YouTube and Roland Martin on Facebook. Uh, we'll post a link here to uh, the full show on YouTube. Uh, going back quickly to um the coronavirus bill how's everybody doing everybody share this broadcasting on social media platforms uh and be sure to follow us on our facebook fan page the the african history network the african history network on facebook turn on notifications so you know when we go live and follow us on our youtube channel michael m hotel i m h o t e p 
uh, and um, click on the bell uh, so you know when we go live also. Okay, so, uh, so if we go back and look at um, this bill here, there's a lot in this, 5,500 pages. Uh, though the nine hundred dollar bill, nine hundred billion dollar bill, now though the the nine hundred billion dollar stimulus package is half the size of the two point two trillion dollar stimulus um, law passed in March of twenty twenty, that provided the core of its legislative provisions, it remains one of the largest relief packages in modern American history. It will revive a supplemental unemployment benefit for millions of unemployed Americans at 300 at 300 dollars a week for 11 weeks and provide for another round of 600 dollar direct payments to adults and children uh quote I expect we'll get the money out by the beginning of next week uh 2400 dollars for a family of four so much needed relief just in time for the holidays end quote said treasury secretary steve mnuchin on uh, cnbc now president-elect joe biden who received a, a coronavirus vaccine on monday with television cameras rolling has insisted that the begin that the bill is only the beginning and that more relief especially to state and local governments will be coming after his inauguration uh next month january 20th 2021 lawmakers hustled on monday to pass the bill nearly 5600 pages long less than 24 hours after its completion and before virtually anyone had read it virtually before anyone had read it at one point aides struggled simply to put the measure online because of a corrupted computer file the legislative text is likely to be one of the longest ever, and it became available only a few hours before both chambers approved the bill. It will go uh, to uh, Donald Trump for his signature next. But with as many as 12 million Americans set to lose access to, uh, to expanded and extended unemployment benefits days after Christmas, passage was not in doubt a number of other pandemic relief provisions are set to expire at the end of the year and lawmakers in both chambers agreed that the approval of the 900 billion dollar relief package was shamefully overdue shamefully overdue over the summer speaker nancy pelosi of california and treasury secretary steve mnuchin inched toward a relief package of nearly 1.8 trillion but after a significant infusion of federal relief in april 2020 senator mitch mcconnell republican of kentucky and the majority leader and several senate republicans initially balked at the prospect of another sweeping spending package with republicans reluctant to spend substantial taxpayer funds and mindful of remaining united before the November election, Moscow Mitch McConnell refused to indulge in anything more than a narrow $500 billion package. Okay, check out the rest of this from the updates from uh, New York Times. Uh, their live updates Congress passes huge coronavirus relief bill. Congress passes huge uh, coronavirus uh, relief bill. Okay, and we'll post this link here also. All right. Okay, so we'll talk about this uh, some more on uh, Tuesday. If we look at this story dealing with the Robert E. Lee statue, uh, NBC News has a, a, a good article on this. And uh, we posted on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, and it got about 1,400 likes. A Robert E. Lee statue removed from U.S. Capitol. Robert E. Lee statue removed from U.S. Capitol. General Robert E. Lee, Confederate general, 
committed treason against the U.S. government, took up arms uh, to fight against the U.S. during the Civil War. Right? He fought to maintain slavery. He was a slave owner also. A Confederate general's image to be replaced by civil rights icon, Barbara Johns, whose 1951 protest was part of Brown versus Board of Education. Now, a statue of uh, Confederate General Robert E. Lee has been removed from the United States Capitol. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam announced on Monday. For 111 years, for 111 years, the statue of General Robert E. Lee stood alongside that of the nation's first president, George Washington, another slave owner, as the state of Virginia's contribution to the National uh, Statuary, Statuary Hall. Each state is allowed two statues in the collection. Now, Virginia plans to, the state of Virginia plans to replace the statue of Robert E. Lee with one of civil rights icon Barbara Johns. Governor Ralph Northam in a statement said, we should all be proud of this important step forward for our Commonwealth and our country. The Confederacy is a symbol of Virginia's racist and divisive history. The Confederacy is a symbol of Virginia's racist and divisive history. And it is past time we tell our story with images of perseverance, diversity, and inclusion. I look forward to seeing a trailblazing young woman of color represent Virginia and inclusion. I look forward to seeing, uh, sorry, I look forward to seeing a trail, uh, to seeing a trailblazing young woman of color represent Virginia in the U.S. Capitol where visitors will learn about Barbara John's uh, contributions to America and be empowered to create a, to, to, and be empowered to create positive change in their communities just like she did. Confederate images do not represent who we are in Virginia, Governor Ralph Northam said. That's why we voted unanimously to remove this statue. I'm sorry, uh, this, this was uh, Senator Louise Lucas who said this. Confederate images do not represent who we are in Virginia. That's why we voted unanimously to remove this statue, said State Senator Louise Lucas, who chaired the Virginia Commission that recommended the removal. Quote, I am thrilled that this day has finally arrived and I thank Governor uh, Northam and the commission for their transformative work, end quote. Now, 1951, 16 year old Barbara Johns led a student strike for equal education at Robert Rusa Moton High School in Farmville, Virginia. Okay, Robert uh, Russa, uh, R U S S A, Robert Russa Moton High School in Farmville, Virginia. Her protest gained the support of the NAACP, and her case was one of the five cases that were consolidated into the pivotal Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas lawsuit. The Supreme Court ruling in that case declared seg segregation unconstitutional in 1954. Quote, when I think of Barbara Johns, I am reminded of how brave she was at such a young age. It's time for us to start singing the songs of some of the Virginians who have done great things that have gone unnoticed. This is a proud moment for our Commonwealth, and I am humbled to have been part of it, said Delegate uh, John uh, Ward or Gian Ward, J E I O N, Gian, I guess it is, who sponsored legislation creating the commission. Okay, so um, it took down the statue there, and I think there's a few hundred more Confederate monuments and statues that need to come down also, uh, as well, because. 
uh, countries don't have monuments and statues honoring traitors to the union. Okay, so this is what happens. All right. Um, all right, how's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on you know, social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. Uh, be sure to follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, on YouTube and um, on, I'm sorry, uh, the African History Network on Facebook and Michael M. Hotep on YouTube. I M H O T E P on uh, on YouTube. Okay. All right. Uh, let's continue here. Let's see. One. Uh, okay. The, the William Barr. We put. We grabbed the William Barr story. So I, I was watching this uh, earlier today. And uh, Attorney General William Barr, no special counsel needed on election fraud of Hunter Biden or, or Hunter Biden. No special counsel needed on election fraud or Hunter Biden. The Attorney General answered questions for reporters two days before he is set to leave office. Attorney General William Barr undercut uh, Donald Trump's election conspiracy theories Monday, saying he would not appoint special counsels to investigate allegations of election fraud or Hunter Biden because there is no need. Now, Donald Trump has yet to concede the election, and some allies have even suggested that the federal government seize voting machines. How dumb is that? Over the weekend, Trump met with uh, appellate lawyer Sidney Powell, uh, who's, she's one of the most idiotic attorneys I've seen. Uh, she's, a, she's a dumbass. Uh, he met with Sidney Powell about a potential voter fraud investigation pressed by reporters about a special counsel investigation, voter fraud and talk of seizing voting machines. Attorney General William Barr offered little support for any such moves. He said, I see no basis now for seizing machines by the federal government, wholesale seizure of machines by the federal government. He said, adding that he stood by his statement that there was no widespread fraud that would affect the outcome of the election. He went on to say, if I thought a special counsel at this stage was the right tool and was appropriate, I would do so. I would name one, but I haven't, and I'm not going to. Okay. Uh, now, Donald Trump tweeted last week that Attorney General William Barr would, would be leaving as Attorney General two days before Christmas. Deputy Attorney General Jeff Rosen will serve as acting attorney general for the final weeks of Trump's term. OK, now, Trump spent months arguing that there was widespread voter fraud in the election. No, there wasn't. You just lost. We don't want you. You just lost. Baselessly claiming that he lost because of, quote unquote, widespread voter fraud. It doesn't exist. Attorney, Ge attorney General William Barr who entertained the possibility of fraud early this year, broke with Trump this month, saying there was no evidence of widespread fraud. This is why almost 60 lawsuits have been thrown out of court because they're not providing evidence. They just in they're, they're in they're making uh, claims in press conferences and on radio shows and on Fox News. But when they go to court, they're not claiming fraud in most of these cases, and they're not providing any evidence of fraud, especially widespread voter fraud. Okay. Um, so check that out. We just posted that article. Uh, so check that out. Lastly, in uh, also African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com, customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. We'll let you know how you can um, advertise with the African History Network. We'll create a video commercial for you, no additional charge. 30-second and 60-second video commercial, it, it will air when we rebroadcast these shows, the video commercial, and uh, we'll create an audio commercial, and it will be in the audio podcast uh, of, of these shows also. So I, I saw this article from face to face africa.com we'll probably talk about it some more tomorrow night cynthia erivo to star in and produce film about enslaved yoruba girl who became a gift to the queen of england this is from december 4th 2020 cynthia erivo 
who we saw as Harriet in the uh, Harriet Tubman in the Harriet movie movie is set to star in and produce a film about Sarah Forbes Bonetta, Sarah Forbes Bonetta, the daughter of an African chief who was captured and presented to the Queen of England as a gift in 1850. Developed by BBC Film, the upcoming film will be a celebration of Sarah, a modern strategic determined heroine who found a way to embrace her blackness, her Africanness, and to ultimately find love, forging a path for herself that honored both her, both her heritage and her upbringing. Now, Benedict Cumberbatch will executive produce uh, the two time Oscar nominee, Cynthia uh, Erivo, and uh, Salome Williams co producing. 33 year old uh, Erivo said she is excited about the upcoming project. Quote, as a Nigerian British woman, as a Nigerian British woman, to get the opportunity to tell the story of another Nigerian British woman who until now has been erased from the history books is an honor. Quote, Miss Sarah Forbes uh, Bonetta uh, Omamba Aina, A-I-N-A, is truly a passion of mine. And I'm so pleased to have been able to find partners in, uh, in the incredible women, uh, Leah Clark and um, Ray, um, rank, uh, rank J R I E N K J E A T T O H to tell the story and finally give her a voice. I cannot wait to dive into her story. She is indeed the forgotten princess, forgotten no more. End quote. End quote. Now, Sarah Ford's Bonetta uh, was born into a royal West African dynasty. Bonetta, uh, uh, originally named uh, uh, Aina, A-I-N-A, -A, was captured by, by King uh, Gezo, G-E-Z-O, of Dahomey during a slave hunt war in 1848, during a slave hunt war in 1848. Her parents were killed in the war, and as a daughter of an African chief, Bonetta was kept in captivity as a state prisoner. Being the princess um, uh, of the uh, of the Yoruba of the Yoruba people, she was to be presented to an important visitor, or sacrificed after the death of a minister or official to become their attendant in the outside world. In June of eighteen fifty, June of eighteen fifty, when she was approximately eight years old. Uh, Sarah Forbes Bonetta was rescued by Captain Frederick E. Forbes of the Royal Navy whilst he was visiting or while he was visiting Dahomey as an emissary of the British government. Now, Forbes asked the king for the little girl to be given to Queen Victoria as a gift. Sarah, Sarah Forbes Bonetta initially stayed with Forbes, Forbes's family before being taken to Windsor Castle on November 9th, 1850. She was received by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The queen handed Bonetta over to the Church Missionary Society and paid for her education. Now, Sarah Forbes Bonetta, a year after, developed a cough believed to be caused by the climate of Britain the queen made arrangements for her to be sent to Sierra Leone for a better climate. There, Bonetta attended the female institution in Freetown, Freetown, but at the age of 12, the queen ordered Sarah to return to England, where she was placed under the charge of the um, uh, Sheon family at Chatham, uh, S-C-H-E-O-N, okay? Check out the rest of this article uh, from... Uh, face-to-faceafrica.com, face-to-faceafrica.com, Cynthia Erivo uh, to star in and produce film about a slave Yoruba girl who became a gift to the Queen of England. This is from December 4th, uh, 2020 from uh, face-to-faceafrica.com. 
All right, let me see here. Uh, I think I got through everything I was going to get to tonight. Okay, we have another new advertiser here, a uh, key to health and wellness. So, as as owner of Key to Health and Wellness, uh, Peggy Chavis is a health coach, a certified nutritionist, and trainer in the management of diabetes and chronic disease. Uh, now, Peggy Chavis is offering a gift of health program that will start on January 2nd, 2021. January 2nd, 2021. People can purchase a gift certificate for a loved one or friend in lieu of shopping for a gift. And she will also be giving away uh, two of these gifts, uh, two of these gift certificates for free. This is an ongoing 21 day program with a focus on achieving a healthy weight, blood sugar, cholesterol, blood pressure, gut, and mindset. The program includes personal accountability coaching, workout programs for all levels, balanced nutrition and supplementation, tools and resources, uh, a secret Facebook group, uh, or optional one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, for more information, give her a call. Area code 804-837-7647, 804-837-7647, or follow them on Facebook at Peggy Chavis dot gifts of health, Peggy Chavis dot gifts of health on Facebook. All right. Got to get out of here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, also, you can donate to the African History. If you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN Show, through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN Show, through Cash App. Then also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN Show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN Show, and at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, all my DVD lectures are there at our website. Digital downloads. We have uh, Ancient Kemet, the uh, Moors, the Ancient Kemet, the Winter Solstice, and the History of Christmas. We have uh, that bundle pack. Uh, also, uh, we have the Africans who were here before Columbus. The Africans who were here before Columbus. Uh, that's an eight DVD bundle pack, which deals with uh, the ancient African presence of uh, in the Americas. The Africans who were here before Columbus. All right. Remember, right now is correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Peace.